I uh, among other things, he wrote a letter to the Soviet Union at one point uh, that Sylvia Marr quotes in her work, where he says that he's done intelligence work before and is offering his services to them or something. Yeah. Uh, so the premise of, of the Idle Warriors is that uh, is, is what that that Oswald defected because of the malaise in post-war Japan. Yeah, so just the, because of the the lousy morale situation overseas, mm -hmm. which was, uh, um, actually it was, uh, it was a very rebellious outfit, Marine Air Control Squadron 1. They finally, they broke it up uh, and uh, sent it back to the states on paper and divided us up and sent us into a bunch of other outfits over there because we were so hard to handle. It had been the same outfit with a few guys going into it and a few guys leaving it every month since World War II when it still had a, a very salty wartime personality. We, we didn't salute officers or, uh, and um, the enlisted men pretty much ran the outfit. They did, it was something like PFC Widow Green and uh, Catch-22, you know, <laughs> but he didn't like an order, he changed it because he was in charge of the Enneagram machine. It was almost like yeah. that. And and so Oswald's character seemed very comfortable in that kind of situation. He yeah, was that type and, of person. Yeah, and uh, Oswald, uh, Oswald behaved the same way in, uh, that most people behaved in Marine Air Control Squadron 1 when he got back to the States. He was behaving the same way that most of them behaved overseas, and was not being, it didn't work in the estates because uh, there just wasn't all that support for it uh, among the other enlisted men. Uh, they weren't uh, that organized or that capable of resisting authority in the states, and so uh, he got in, himself into a lot of trouble for that reason alone, just because he. He maintained the same attitude that he'd had overseas, and it was very acceptable in the outfit overseas. Mm -hmm. We could get away with it there for some reason. We, uh, <laughs> we couldn't in the States. So you're, th this view that is kind of put forth in Idle Warriors is one that you maintained really even after the assassination. It was only in periods after that when you started reading the critics that you yeah, started to read it. Yeah, I, uh, I, I didn't become a critic of the Warren Report myself until 1965. And uh, um, so even, yeah, I wrote a book about Oswald after the assassination, a, a nonfiction book, or Is one that, that I imagined was nonfiction at the time. <laughs> That's the book Oswald? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there were eight pages or so of Vital Warriors in that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that... Uh, pretty much the same view as I presented in the novel, you know, that, uh, that basically it was a matter, a psychological matter that it caused him to defect, and then I assumed to kill the president at the time. And uh, I, I, I just, I think I was just all wet on that entirely, okay? Mm -hmm. I think he was probably a CIA agent spying on the FBI for Kennedy, you know, by, at the time of the assassination. I think that's probably why they set him up. Hmm. Do you think that, that uh, any of his behavior would be the result of any type of uh, experiment or anything that was done uh, in regards maybe to MK Ultra or anything similar to that that would be done with, with people that were in the service well, at that I'll time? I'll tell you something. And... Um, I hate to talk about this because it causes a lot of people to think I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. But when I was in the service with him at that same time, I began experiencing audio hallucinations uh, in, in a borderline area between sleeping and waking as I was going to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm absolutely certain it was mind control. There's uh -huh. no doubt in my mind that it was mind control. That mm -hmm. I was that they had planted an electrode in the base of my skull and were mind-controlling me. Uh-huh. 
Now, do you think that maybe they were doing the same thing with Oswald? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's very probable. You know, one of the interesting things about your novel, Carrie, is that you have a character in there named Mike, who is a close friend of Johnny Shelburne, the Oswald yeah. character, but who also is regarded as a twin, almost a twin. Yeah, that, that, uh, um, that's an unfortunate coincidence. <laughs> I'd, I'd forgotten all about that until mm -hmm. I read the novel again recently. Yeah, that may have given rise to the theories that I'm the second, it was the second Oswald and, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, my understanding is that Gordon Novell's wife told uh, Dick Garrison's grand jury that uh, Gordon Novell and William Seymour were the second Oswalds. Uh, whoever it was, in my opinion, was, was plant, planting proof of conspiracy. Because after, after the Oswald became famous, these impersonations made it obvious that there was a conspiracy. So I I, uh, I, I think it's a compliment that that it, that uh, that Garrison and some other critics should assume that I was one of the second Oswalds. However, it isn't true. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I think whoever it was though was trying to prove that the, was trying to leave evidence rather than trying to cover something up. Uh, let's talk about Jim Garrison. So, All right. Um, you were, he uh, charged you with perjury over the novel? Yeah. Well, not over the novel. What, uh, there was a woman in New Orleans who swore up and down that she saw me and Oswald sitting together in the Bourbon House in New Orleans one afternoon. And I could not... I remembered the incident. I, I remembered... The afternoon, I remembered everything except who I was sitting with, and I could not for the life of me remember who it was.